Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to talk about Navigator 2.0 in Flutter, which arrived in version 122 of Flutter. And the reason why we want to talk about it is why it was not so successful as we all wished. And now, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so this video today will be a bit special because we don't take a tutorial on how to implement Flutter 2.0. For that, I create a link that up on top for the live stream we implemented it and also a video from Simon Lightfoot where he explains us all the details of Navigator 2.0. And because he does it in a very good manner, which he directly delivered to me in a short talk, there you will find all the information on how to implement Navigator 2.0. This video will be more an explanation on why we need Navigator 2.0 in the first place and also how the road is going further and where Flut the Flutter team is planning to go ahead with Navigator 2.0. As always when I prepare for such a video, especially if it's going through a topic that I'm not completely aware of, I'm doing some voting systems and I take Twitter and YouTube into account here in this case which got overall around 200 votes. You will find the link down in the video description below for both of them so that you can inform yourself even more. And here the problem starts. As you can see, both votes received the most votes in I don't have used it so far. And this is a catastrophic if you talk about APIs, especially if it's such an important API like the navigation system. If you think about it, navigation should be very easy and convenient because you want just to go from one point to another point. And even if it sounds that easy, it is not if you want to do it in a declarative way. And also it is not if you have not the preconditions or pre-requirements for it. So all of that lead to a lot of problems during the build time and also a lot of problems for us developers because we have to keep so many things in mind, especially if we talk about a cross-platform solution like Flutter is. So that means we need to understand, for example, how the web URLs taking information to it. We also need to understand how Windows does it. We needed to understand how our iOS and Android devices understand how to navigate from A to B. Also, what we want to have are some scenarios like, for example, guardings. That means you want to navigate to a page, but you want to have a guard in between that saves you before you jump into that page. All of these little scenarios need to be applied for a navigation system. And of course, a lot of frameworks have already fantastic solutions for that. But Flutter was not really one of them. Especially Flutter wants to be declarative. But the old solution, Navigator 1.0, was absolutely imperative. You understand, you just write Navigator off context and say push. And then you push something on a stack and you have been navigated to another page. This led to two big problems. Number one, the is initial route was removed because it just was never used right. And the other thing that was there is the problem if you want to have, for example, a route that gets a transition and a route that doesn't get a transition, you hadn't the possibility to change this behavior on this underlying behavior. In order to improve that, Navigator 2.0 was born and the idea was born to create that. So the Flutter idea get some really lot of feedback created, a public API specification understandable for everyone so everyone can contribute. And they tried now to implement the declarative way, the fluttery way. But that lead to another problem. They wanted to support Navigator 1.0 because the transformation to 2.0 was not as, let's say, painless as we are usually expect upgrades in Flutter. So with that in mind, they started to create like a hybrid between imperative and declarative solution. That led to another problem that neither package developers could really use that complicated solution for Navigator 2.0, nor could end users really use it. And here we come to the point where we need a better solution. Okay, so what did the Flutter team does in that case? They created a funky way and created their whole Navigator 2.0 with all the smarts and so on to solve the problems that Initialized had. And now the idea is to take one of the packages that solves already the navigation problem with 2.0 
and try to enhance that package and work together with the package creators. There are currently three different packages that are in the, let's say, closer look of the Flutter team. At the moment, they are in the investigation phase. So if you have a fantastic package that works already with Navigator 2.0, you can contribute to that issue and they will also take a look into that. But we want to take now a look on how this investigation works. But before we start and taking a look on how all the different steps that the Flutter team is doing to improve Navigator 2.0, let's have quickly a brief catch up what we need to know to implement Navigator 2.0 and why it feels so complicated for every end developer. All right, so what you can see is that for the Navigator 2.0, we need to know different APIs or parts of that API, which is the page, the router, route information parser, route delegate, back button dispatcher. So these are six things that we need to know. And if we take a look into the table on how they work together and interact with each other, that already looks very difficult, especially if we compare it to the old Navigator 1.0 possibility of just Navigator dot of push, pop, pop until, and so on, right? So the question now is how much you want to give to the end developer. And at the moment, it seems like too much. For that, the Flutter development team created the Navigator 2.0 API usability research. And you saw that already beforehand, but here inside you can see what are the goals, non-goals, and the planned work. And as you can see, we have here, for example, a target completion rate for the 5th of March. This video is recorded on the 3rd of March, so you can identify here already that everything that I say here could be already outdated. And if you are interested, please check out this repository. Link down in the video description. All right, but what you can see here is, for example, and uh, is the navigation scenario um, storyboard that the Flutter team provides. So the UXR team provides here more information about different scenarios a navigator needs to handle in a very easy and efficient way. So all the packages that um, will be tested, so the nine packages that will be tested, should be tested against this scenario list to see how good they help the end developer. All right, so you find, for example, dynamic linking, you find skipping stacks, you find logging logout sign up, which goes into the guard direction, nested routing, and so on and so forth. And this is already a lot of information for the scenarios. So in the second part, the package comparative analysis, all the packages will be compared if they are solving these scenarios very quickly or not that quickly. Yeah, and also after that, an API usage walkthrough study is inside and a usability testing. So that means there is currently a timeline till the 30th of April, and for the last one is not a status set yet. And if you take a look here inside of this issue from the UXR team, you can see conduct primarily comparative analysis of router packages. So they have inserted the nine packages that are at the moment identified and Jack Kim already did some like pre-search for it. So they took a look into the different packages and checked out what they already solve and what they don't solve yet. So you can see here a lot of different informations about it and that is really cool and you can have here a lot of impact. So as you see, as one hour ago, this is just discussed. So you can see that a lot of these things are getting directly discussed here. And if you want to contribute, check out this API usability research and talk with the guys. Down here, you find the getting involved and also down in the video description. All right, but what I want to do next is just taking a look at the most of these packages or the third most packages that are currently looked into because all of these packages currently using already Navigator 2.0 and trying to facilitate the things for the developers like me and you. So also here you can see they already implemented a lot of stuff. They give a lot of documentation and I really like how good the explanation here is. And I really hope that we will solve the biggest problems with Navigator 2.0 with these fantastic packages. I hope that they will help us. Okay, now we understood where comes the idea from to upgrade the API. 
We under investigated how the Flutter team is working at the moment right away on this problem. And we also take a look into the different scenarios that are getting looked into it. Also, we took a brief introduction into different packages that are currently used. But where does that leave us now? Well, Flutter Navigator 2.0 successfully solved all the problems that it wanted to solve. It made it more fluttery, it made it more declarative, it made it more a dynamic and possibility of nested linking was possible. But it also introduced new problems. For example, the end developers had a really hard time to understand and work with this new API. And even now, most of the people don't really use it. So that is a huge problem and it is really not the way Flutter usually works. You know, Flutter is usually easy to use. Uh, you don't really need to, a lot of explanation to do some cool stuff. But with Navigator 2.0, it was a bit special, different. Okay, it's a di complex topic and I don't want to say that everything is perfect there, but now they try to solve that problem via a high-level API for all the developers out there to create a package. So what should you do now? First, uh, if you can, try to contribute. If you have knowledge about Navigator 2.0 or a specific opinion about it, added to the GitHub issue because that helps the Flutter team and makes Flutter in general better in the future. And if you think about right now to progress and go into Navigator 2.0 because it's the future, I would currently wait until the research and also the information are out there how Navigator 2.0 goes further. Because it could be that maybe in a year or so there is a complete different solution for the whole thing. So. I would still wait until more information are available to fulfill your success. Because if you check out the Twitter feed, you will find a lot of comments about like they would try two weeks to work on the issue and they couldn't really implement Navigator 2.0 or that they have waited till now or that it is really a disaster. I wouldn't say it's a disaster because it's an improvement to before or at least they tried to improve it beforehand. And I think to solve their problem, it was perfect but now we have to find a new solution to more or less make it easier to use for everyone please let me know down in the comments below what you think about that topic hit the like button subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet until the next time bye